Welcome to something quite new on Australian television. At least the program, Jack High, is new. You could hardly say that about Lawn Bowls. The grand old game has been with us since the 16th century and its popularity just seems to keep on growing. In Australia, it's one of our largest participant sports, but it's only just beginning to be recognised as a television sport. This has come about through the 1980 World Bowls Championships staged in Melbourne in January 1980 and ABC Television's coverage of that big event. Well, for the inaugural series of Jack High, we've brought back to Melbourne many of the stars who emerged at those championships at Frankston. And now, I'd like you to meet them. Voted personality of the championships at Frankston, Mal Hughes, a member of England's world championship winning team this year. Alongside him, Melbourne's John Snell, single silver medalist behind the great David Bryant at both the 1978 Commonwealth Games and the 1980 world titles. From Queensland, Keith Poole, who skipped Australia's triple and four at Frankston. From Hong Kong, Philip Chock, a gold medal winner in international competition, a feat also achieved by Philip's mother. John Murta, currently singles champion of New Zealand and a member of that rare bowling breed, a left-hander. Alf Sandico from South Australia, who led for Australia's gold medal winning pair at Frankston. And skipper of that great combination, Peter Rubin of New South Wales, who was also toured with an Australian rugby union team back in the 1950s. And finally, Alex McIntosh of Scotland, who's won medals at the last three Commonwealth Games and the last two World Championships. In a moment, Rubin and McIntosh meet in the opening match of what will be a 15-match series in Jack High. <laughs> playing his first bowl and he's a lovely line but he could have done with a couple more feet so Cedric from being down on the depths of despair we're still in business three shots in game oh, it's cool. there's the number one look at that what a bowl Letter. Forced to change his hand is Sandico because his own bowl is now four feet short. Now oh, and he's well overweight with this. This could just about go into the ditch. Yes, it's gone. Keith Paul coming up to have a look at this head just to see how far his bowl is away from the jack. Yes, it's only about an inch two inches away remember he just wants three to win this title 18 12 in his favor drawing a toucher with his first bowl on this the 24th end and here's his second bowl on the way heavy a good bowl there just behind the jack just in case there's going to be uh, an upshot here from Alf Sandico another great insurance bowl from Poole because should that shot bowl be touched very hard the jack would naturally come back to his back bowl so Sandico well and truly behind the eight ball 
reaching. Is he reaching? No, no, he's not. He's fallen there a yard short. Could be second shot, but it's still a long way away. Here comes the second, third bowl here from Keith Poole. And this could well be number two. Yes, it is. There they are. The two shots there for Keith Poole, all both within six inches of the jack. Now Alf Sandico. But he's got another bowl. He's got Keith. Well, both have got yeah. one more bowl. This is uh, Alf Sandico's last. If he doesn't do anything with this, and Keith Poole can draw another shot. comes this third bowl from Keith Paul coming up and drawing a beautiful second shot there to give him two. Now Sandico looking at this head realizes his opponent has got a back bowl as well so he can't drive at this but he's got to get rid of those two bowls because his nearest as we can see there at about one o'clock is a yard away and seeing the how skillful Paul is drawing, he could easily get another third shot within there and win the match. And don't forget, one of those bowls is a toucher. Indeed. Well, now Sandico sets himself. Drawing as close as he can to this jack. That's his nearest bowl. It's about two feet away. And now, Keith Poole, the opportunity to win this title, line two, if he can draw a third shot nearer the jack than Alf Sandico's nearest bowl while well, he's home. Leading 18-12, line two. Wants one more. This bowl could well do it. He's got nearly two feet to draw it, Cedric. Yes. Got it's on good its grass. way. On to his own bowls. Here it comes. This is the game. A magnificent shot by Poole. He won the tournament. What a bowl. Great game of bowls here between Keith Poole and Alf Sandico. Keith Poole of Queensland defeating Alf Sandico of South Australia by 21 shots to 12 in this final match of Jack Hart. There it is. Three glorious bowls from Keith Paul. A great winner of this Jack High series. So victory in the inaugural Jack High tournament to the little wizard from the West Caloundra Club in Queensland, Keith Paul. The loser... The loser, great in defeat, great through four victories prior to the final from Maitland in South Australia, Alf Sandico. <laughs> Alf, you picked the wrong one to lose. Yes, I'm, I'm afraid it was the wrong one, but uh, I've had a great carnival here and uh, I congratulate Keith very much on, on winning this tournament and uh, he was too consistent. Was your form down a little on the first four games? Uh, possibly. I, I'm not going to say my form was down, but I, he put, kept the pressure on, and, and when you got the pressure on, your form does go. And um, but I uh, tried to, uh, get, you know, give him a good game, and uh, I hope that he enjoyed it as much as I did. Thanks very much, Alf Sandico. <laughs> Keith, you picked the right one to win. Yes, Tim. It was a good one to win. Your form was uh, up to everything you expected. Well, I thought that game, uh, possibly I struggled just a little bit with the weight of the uh, pace of the green. Uh, I was fortunate, I think, to just have that three or four uh, points lead on Elf, which uh, let me uh, play a bit more confidently. And uh, I think that was the main part of the win. You've been very modest about your singles play. And in fact, last night in the clubhouse, you told me that you feel there are better singles players in Queensland than you. Uh, how do you feel about your form now? 
Uh, well, uh, I must be a better singles player than I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to argue with that. <laughs> the winner of Jack High, Keith Paul. I'd like to acknowledge the presence at our presentation of two gentlemen who have been of great assistance to the Australian Broadcasting Commission in this major production. The President of the Australian Bowls Council, Mr Percy Barnes. And also the President of the Moorabbin Bowling Club, Mr Bert Penwine. And I'll use this opportunity to thank once again all the members of the Moorabbin Bowling Club who have got right behind Mr Penwarn and done such a magnificent job for us all. And now to present the first Jack High Trophy to Keith Poole, the General Manager of Mazda, Mr Ray Baxter. Thank you, Tim. Mr Barnes, Mr Penwain, ladies and gentlemen. We at Mazda are delighted with the opportunity to be involved with the first Jack High series. And we would have to admit that their standard has been extremely high. And we are very proud of that association. It gives me great pleasure, Keith, if you would like to come forward, to present to you this painting as the winner of the Jack High series, congratulations and truly a great performance of bowling. Thank you, Ray. Ladies and gentlemen, well, it is a great thrill for me to have won this inaugural tournament. It's always a good one to win the first one because no one else can, uh, can do that. <laughs> but it's been a great tournament right through. It was wonderful to have our overseas bowlers with us. I think the great sportsmanship displayed right throughout the week uh, over, the, over, these, uh, over the weeks of this tournament was really outstanding. And, uh, well... I would like to congratulate Alf Sandico on the great fight that he put up in the final. And Alf has... <laughs> Alf never stopped trying and uh, he got as many as I wanted him to get at any rate. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, thanks very much. It was a great tournament and uh, all the best. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our company, we would like to present to ALF and to all the other members who participated, both from overseas and from Australia, a memento of this first tournament. We're delighted to have you with us. We trust that you enjoyed yourselves. Thank you for coming. And to you, ALF, congratulations. To Ray. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm certainly thrilled to have participated in this tournament and I would like to thank the supporters, Masters, very much for this lovely trophy that has been given to every participant in the tournament. Once again, I must say congratulations to Keith. He's the oldest. <laughs> he deserves to win it. Uh, and uh, all I can say is thank you very, very much. Well, that's the first Jack High tournament, the tournament for 1980, and I'm sure a lot of people are hoping it won't be the last. So for the final time from the Moorabbin Bowling Club in Melbourne, we bid you farewell. John Snell applauds it. Three down. Is it the shot bar? Well, Snell has an opportunity here. If he can remove that bowl of 
Hughes, he could be four shots. There it is, that red and yellow disc one at nine o'clock from the jack. That would appear to be the shot of his opponents. Snell now going to try, no doubt, to remove it. Flat on the backhand. fast because he's got some opposition bowls short of him there. He's got to get inside them and he's going to drive at this. He's got it. Oh, what a great foul. He's made three shots. Here comes this drive again from John Snell, just to catch the side of that opposition bowl, removes it, and it gives himself definitely two shots. And now they're looking to decide which is the nearer after two have been removed. Snell measuring his own bowl, the green and yellow disc one. Using this telescopic measure, now he goes over to his opponents. And it is three to John Snell, so after four ends, he leads by four shots to two. Playing the forehand. Certainly not afraid to take grass down, going to the southern end. Working home now, but I don't think it'll come in far enough. Green is only running 13 seconds. Hughes has got a lot less green going down. Could have a pretty good bowl here. Starting to come home now. Look at it. Great bowl, Mel Hughes. There isn't any doubt in my mind that Snell has changed his grip and his stance since World Bowls. Look at that run away. Made two shots. Still plenty of room there by the same token because that last one's well over two feet away. Now he's got better green this time. How's his weight? Starting to move in now. Weight looks good. Weight looks good. Balled over, could be the shot. Great ball. Hughes coming up to try and dislodge that near his... down because of that bowl having been shifted. Could only be one down, but I think it could be two. So Snell, he's going to have another drive. Most unusual in single games, but when you are as good a bowler as Snell is, and as good a driver as Snell is, see what I mean? See what I mean? Two down to three up. Now, what a lot of pressure on this bowl from Mel Hughes. Got to keep it in the boundary. Get as close to the ditch as he can without losing his bowl. He's well out under the other rink. Will it draw enough for him? Has he got enough weight? 
Still running on. Great bowl, Mel Hughes. You've drawn the shot from three down to one up. Let's have a look at this last drive from John Snell to alter that hit completely. Here he comes, contacts the jack, takes it over into the ditch. A wonderful drive there. But nevertheless, with his last bowl, Hughes got the shot and trails by three shots to four. Six about to start. Mel Hughes trailing his opponent, John Snell, by three shots to four. Electing to cover. Backhand. But falling short by some two yards. First bowl, coming round the forehand, hoping to get round his opponent's bowl, but contacts it. So both bowls, some five feet away from the jack. making sure he was up that one finishing some two and a half yards through and now feeling that he's blocked on the forehand John Snell electing to come on the backhand and he's got five feet and he's done it good draw shot roll there from the Australian his own bowl coming up trying to rest up against his opponents but just passing it brave try there good weighted bowl after his first two poor ones but Snell still lying one there they are behind the head both of them pretty well jack high curving in got a good weighted bowl just a shade wide and still Snell lies one shot last chance here for Mal Hughes trying to make contact with the green and yellow bowl of Snell then does it and lies two shots well bowled Mal Hughes from Hartlepool in County Durham in the northeast of England. Wouldn't be at all surprised to see another drive here to get rid of both of those bowls. He's had two successful drives as he asked for too much to get three in a row. Great try. One out, Hughes denies one shot, and so after six ends, the scores are level. N7 and 8 produced more seesawing, with Snell taking one shot and Hughes two. Now Hughes leading his opponent John Snell from Melbourne by six shots to five.
Playing to a jack some 33 yards away from the mat, and that is not a bad start. Only finishing about a foot short on his forehand. John Snell following it, hoping to get closer to the jack than that bowl. A sweep on that hand where the bowl will swing across and that hand is on that occasion just a shade too heavy and a good bowl here from the Englishman there's number two First bowl. Well, and the bowl will swing in as it comes to the end of its course. And here it comes. Could well be the shot. In fact, Mal Hughes is asking the marker, Sam Murphy, what the position is. The holding shot. That bowl is slightly behind deck. Second shot. There's the answer. Hughes is lying the shot and Snell's bowl is slightly behind the jack, so rightly so, he comes up in the forehand and is hoping to rest that bowl and push it even further away. There's the bowl of Hughes coming in the forehand, trying to do, he's inside it, could rest it out. What a beautiful bowl. That is a magnificent bowl from Mel Hughes. And, uh, Ian, you'll agree that uh, the Englishman has certainly found his length and the green. He's got three excellent bowls there, all within about uh, 15 inches of the jack. Just wondering about a Snell drive. Yes, you can back it in. When you see Snell swing like that, he's getting ready for a drive. Now he's had three drives, two and three quarter way successful. Down the line. A bit of two of them. them. Yes, that's a pretty successful bowl. He was three down. Now he's only one down. And you don't blame a chap for driving when he's in that position. So often do we find bowlers will drive indiscriminately. And as they often say in that case, well, it takes an artist to paint a picture. But any fool can come along and tear it up. And here, I think that <laughs> Snell, well was, Snell was right in driving at that lot because he couldn't have drawn a shot because all those bowls are far too close. Now, if you can your fourth bowl, Mr. Hughes. If you can do what you did with the other three, you could well get two shots here, but you've got a bit wider. And to turn in time. Now he got a good length, but as we see, it's a long way away from the jack. He's now going to drive again. Now he's going to draw by the look of his feet on the mat. So if he drove and took his own bowl out, he could be two down. Well, oh, he's swinging his hand. He's on the other side of the mat. I think he's going to have a go at this because if he does get it out cleanly, he would then lie the shot. He's been successful every drive so far in this match. Here we go again. Got it. He oh, what a great bowl. And but oh, the jacks come back. The jacks come back. <laughs> is the shot and Mel Hughes applauds a, a great drive because Snell was unlucky that the jack hit the back of the ditch and came back otherwise he would have had at least two shots but a great drive after nine ends it's tied up six all end number 11 and Hughes has uh, got away to a break of eight to six favour of Hughes playing this forehand which he has played so well on the first few wins of this match another one about 18 inches away Snell playing the same forehand shot Snell has been wide on previous occasions and this is no exception he's, he's far too wide 
and a bit heavy too. Could have done with four foot less weight there at least. Now the years from his familiar squat, his white cap. Beautiful green again. Looks a pretty good bowl. Home she comes. Picks it up. Great bowl. Mel Hughes. Because the jack has been shifted some 18 inches away from the centre line, Snell was forced to change his line of direction. He's having a pretty good chance of doing it too, and there's a great second shot for him. This could well give him a chance with a later bowl to have a drive, seeing he's now got second shot. Right, no, short of jack high. Question, was it jack high? He said no, just forward of jack high. And for the benefit of our interested viewers who just don't know what jack high is, it means if you're level with the jack across the rink, you put a ruler across it and extended it out and you were level with the jack with your bowl, that's what we call jack high. And look at this great bowl of Mal Hughes again. Oh, but he's left that uh, very inviting look that Snell will drive. There's a swing of the arm. How long before he's going to miss one? This time. I think you'd agree, Cedric. I don't care who the bowler is in the world. There's no way you'll get every drive you go for. Oh, no. We're not machines, are we? No. <laughs> so, it looks as though Mal Hughes is lying two shots here. And Cook could increase this lead. Leading at the moment by eight shots to six. Lying two here. He's got one opportunity now. three shots. I think he's looking for a back bowl, isn't he? Yes, because he re realises that uh, Snell has another shot, another bowl to go. Yeah. There it is, there's oh, the protection. What a great bowl. That is an excellent bowl, just finishing inches from the ditch. So here's the last chance for Snell to get out of this. Difficulty, two down. Missed with the last drive, previous bowl. He's got it that time, but he trails the jack back and he goes back to that bowl that Mal Hughes put there, his previous one. There it is. So, after 11 ends, Mal Hughes leads by nine shots to six. Mal Hughes drawing and playing very well, forcing Snell into driving, and he's giving the crowd a, a great exhibition of driving. Well, Mal, you've uh, put a bad one down there. Two to half, nearly three feet offline for a start, and about four, oh, best part four or five feet short at least. The game getting towards the halfway mark, remembering it's 21 up. And Snell trailing by three has played a pretty good shot here. Beautiful line, look at that right on the line. Mal Hughes has got to correct bad mistake he made at the first bowl and he's done it pretty well well has he done it pretty well what a magnificent bowl for Mel Hughes shot and he's just under it what a great try what a magnificent try and 
so doing, pushes his own nearest bowl further away. Giving Hughes the opportunity now of getting a second shot if he can draw this one within a foot of the jack. It looks as if he's doing it. There it is. There's number two from the Englishman. Once again, Snell in strife. But he's getting out of it on numerous occasions with his accurate driving. He's going to do a draw shot, just a little overweight in the hopes of collecting the jack and just pushing it through to his own short bo uh, behind bowls. He's got it, but he didn't hit it cleanly. He just pushes it on to that bowl of Hughes. Couldn't have played that shot any better. He had to get the jack, but it jammed against the bowl of Hughes. And he had two receivers waiting for it. No doubt Hughes has noticed those three bowls behind the jack of his opponents, and if he could put one amongst them to, to prevent Snell from getting a score, should he pick the jack up cleanly, it would be to his advantage. Uh, you're a bit narrow, uh, Mal, but if your weight's good, it'll give you a chance to stay in. Uh, he's holding two shots. Now, Snell's... He has a great chance if he can play that same shot as he did with the previous one. And I don't think the bowl would jam this time. The jack would uh, jam on the bowl. He's only got a trail of, well, two feet and he'll make four shots. When I say only got to, well, uh, it's going to be a perfectly placed bowl with the right weight. He's got to reach the head, give it a chance. Four or five feet over the weight. I think at that pace, he's going to collect the front bowls. Using it, but uh, not slight enough. So after 12 ends, two shots to Mel Hughes, and he goes out with a very handy lead. It's 11 to 6. Of those 12 ends, well, Mel Hughes has won eight of them. And certainly is uh, playing extremely well. Snell getting out of danger by accurate driving, and look at this, here's the start of end number 13, and a toucher straight away by the Englishman. There's some of the opposition, Philip Chock and his wife Jenny looking on. We'll see Philip Chock later in this series, representing Hong Kong. And on the mat, we see a drive coming with his first bowl from John Snell. And he's got it. What a shot. So it's all square. No bowls on the green at all. The toucher of Hughes in the ditch. Still counted a live bowl. Now is he going to try and replace it? That is his endeavor, and how's he going? Not too bad. Shade short, only about uh, 15 inches. So. Snell now electing to draw this. Not much of a target to drive at that one. He's got 15 inches to get the shot. And what a bowl it is. That is a good ball. Having had a drive with his last bowl and then having to adjust the weight to do a draw shot. That is good bowling. Now, Mal Hughes is in a very good position. He's got a toucher in the ditch, which means it's still live because it hit the jack. You can see by Mal Hughes' attempt to try and get this jack into the ditch. Oh, he's hit it the he wrong has. way. Now, he's got two touches in the ditch, but the jack is a long way from them. I would say the best part of eight feet. So Snell's got a paddock to draw the shot. Marker just getting a marker to put onto the bank to show the players where the jack is in the ditch. And now 
it's going to be the person who can get nearest to that jack without going into the ditch to remain on the green within the confines of the green and is Snell's bowl coming back? Yes, it's just over. And that is the shot. And now, Mel Hughes got one bowl. He's electing to go up onto the, his backhand to swing inside the short bowls. He's coming inside. Now, has he got the weight? Steady. A bit heavy. Steady. Oh, it's gone in. So that is a dead bowl. Move from the bank, or onto the bank. Now Snell, line one. Trying to make it two. There is another good bowl from the Australian. Oh, good length bowling that. He only had about six inches to play with. Otherwise, it would have gone into the ditch. That is the completion of that end, and two good bowls there from John Snell. Let's have a get, look again at that drive from... Mal Hughes slicing the jack, unfortunately, and the jack going right away to the other side of the rink, allowing Snell to draw two shots. On the 14th, Mal Hughes' immaculate draw shots earned him another two shots, as Snell, a notoriously slow starter, was getting into his stride. So here we go with the start of end number 15. Mal Hughes from England with the red and yellow discs on his bowls, leading his opponent, John Snell from Australia, with the green and yellow discs by 13 shots to eight. And that is not a bad start, just finishing about a yard through. John Snell, bank manager from Melbourne. Trailing, as I say, by eight shots to 13, looking for some hidden reserves now. short by Val Hughes. He hadn't got a bad green, but falling some six feet short there. Still, does Snell persist on this forehand? He had an open hand on the on his backhand, but he's going to try and get round this short bowl of Mal Hughes. He's rounded, I think. Here it comes. Here it comes for number one. That will surely make Hughes change his hand. And it's on its way, on his backhand this time. Steady. Picking the jack? No, just missing it and going through. Australian. Exactly the same as he did with his last bow. It will be another shot. Come on. Yes, and there it is. As consistent bowling. Two bowls finishing exactly in the same position. This is Hugh's last chance. Rough, this bowl. He's certainly a comedian on the green. But that one, no way will that come into the picture. So, Snell certainly got the advantage on this end. He was talking to the spectators. Now sitting down amongst them whilst waiting for his opponent to deliver his last bowl. to make three shots here. Got the 
green again. How's his weight? Too heavy, do you think? Great foul. Yeah, he's got the four. So that brings him right back now. And he now only trails by one. Starting the 16th end, Snell having scored a four on the 15th brings him right back into the game. He trails by one, 12 to 13, remembering that they play up to 21. Snell using the familiar Australia colours of gold and green on his bowls and is a pretty good starter. Sam Murphy the marker gets out the chalk. He's only a couple of inches in front of the jack. Yes. Four inches, I think, the marker was replied to Mel Hughes. The Englishman, great personality. He's narrow this time. You'll see his bowl with the disc which has got red and yellow on it. Cut across the head. Beautifully weighted bowl. And that's what we call jack high. It's level with the jack. Even though it's six feet away or four feet away or three inches away, it's still jack high. weighted shot. He's starting to put the pressure on Hughes now. Oh, now, but oh, but boy, if you left this open. It's as open as the Sydney heads, as we say here in Australia. There's an on shot coming up with Mel Hughes, but has he got enough green? He'll lose the bowl because he wanted to play through it, but that was not a well-delivered shot. And he's getting himself into trouble now. This is not a good bowl. He's mad with himself. He should have been behind the head there or else got another one into it to make Mal Evans think, well, do I drive or draw as near as I can? But he's given him the opportunity to have another drive at this. I guess he's contacted something here. Oh, he's got one out. So there's the solitary Snell bowl there. Nothing else down within four feet of the jack, and both men have one bowl to go. Snell's got to find nearly six feet on that bad bowl of his. He had two beautiful bowls in, one which was removed by Mel Hughes. And let us see if he can correct that. Got the green all right. Weight certainly looks a lot better. Kick if he leans on his own bowl, pushes it to the back, and that's what he wanted. Two good shots there. Now, what will Mel Hughes do? Will he go again for it? Yes, he is. He was unsuccessful his first time, was successful with his second, and I think he's missed with this, so Snell will get two shots, and after the 16th end, Snell has hit the front. He leads 14 to 13. Clearly, it was Hughes' drawing power against Snell's driving. But on the 17th, the Australian couldn't stop the Englishman from taking another shot. Beautiful throw. As we start the 18th end, Mel Hughes, John Snell, locked in battle. All even at 14 each, up to 21, remember? Mel Hughes playing his backhand. And uh, a little bit narrow, a little bit short. About two foot six, maybe. Now he's going to force John Snell, I have no doubt, was going to play his forehand. He's forced him onto the backhand. And coming up to the one or two vital ends of the game. Now a break at this stage of the game of one or two shots uh, would be a tremendous advantage. Snell has a bit better green. His weight it labor unless he picks the jack up which he did shift and he's made his own bowl